Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. Now, uh, this story is an absolute tragedy. It's about a young man, James Cameron. He's 41, uh, and he died. He passed away in uh, Nine Wells Hospital in Dundee. Uh, the cause of death listed uh, was COVID. However, on examining the medical notes, his sister um, has sort of seen so many red flags that I think, and when we do the story, I think you'll agree, that it is nothing short of massive medical negligence. He was given experimental medication that would have been unsuitable for him. Any doctor who would have read his notes and would have seen like this particular case would certainly, if he was aware, never have prescribed what was given. Um, of course, it's like anything with the NHS, everything's a bit shady, no one's admitting to anything. Now, I don't think um, I don't think anyone is going to sit there and say that it was done deliberately, uh, but I do think that it was done negligently. Answers must come. People must be accountable. Unfortunately, nobody seems to be. But we'll have a look at this story. Um, it, it's basically his sister has had uh, a lot of input on this. She's worked tirelessly to find out the truth, uh, and the truth makes for some very uncomfortable reading. Anyway, we'll get into it and have a look. Here goes. So a Scots family fear experimental COVID medication killed the beloved Dundee dad. James Cameron, 41, died in Nine Wells Hospital in Dundee with COVID listed as his cause of death. Um, but when, you, when we go through this, you'll see that it is very unlikely that actually it is COVID. What they were doing, um, and we know this subsequently, is that... In, they were trying to put as many COVID, as many deaths as they could down to COVID, um, even when it wasn't COVID. I mean, you could have been hit by, and this was absolutely a case. One, one guy died after being hit by a bus, but because he'd had COVID in the previous 28 days, his, his cause of death was listed as COVID. Well, unless the virus was actually driving the bus, uh, it clearly wasn't COVID. But they were trying to put as many deaths as possible down because they wanted to increase fear. Uh, but it was possible that people died of other things. And I think as we go through this, you'll you'll see that this was the case. And he did not, it seems, die of COVID. He may have had at some point COVID, but it should not have been the cause of death. But again, by, by listing it as COVID, then the hospital can get away and basically immunise itself against any kind of prosecution. Uh, so anyway, a family have demanded a probe as they claim an experimental COVID medication may have killed a much-loved dad. James Cameron, 41, died in Nine Wells Hospital in Dundee with COVID listed as his cause of death. But his sister Pamela was allowed access to his medical records, which showed he was also suffering from a potentially fatal flesh-eating bug. Now, where did he get that? Obviously, within the grounds of the hospital. Pamela discovered that before he died, James had been given tocizilumab, an arthritis drug used to treat COVID in some patients, but linked to a spate of deaths in the US. Studies have connected it to an increased risk of catching deadly hospital infections. Um, was it no, no sacomial infections, I think they call them. Uh, that's infections you only, only ever catch in hospital because you have you know various conditions um, and then you have all these ill people in close proximity. So infection rates are higher. So there's an actual term for it. Uh, anyway, now the family are demanding to know why uh, tocizilumab was used on James and other patients in the UK when studies show it can reduce the, the body's ability to fight infections. So in other words, you have someone with an, effect an infection, you're giving them this, which stops the body fighting the infection. What? Anyway, the family have told how James appeared to suffer an allergic reaction before his death. His death. And they said they believe that the drug contributed to his death. Pamela said, when I saw him, he looked like a red balloon about to pop. But when I raised concerns with the staff, I was told it was nothing to worry about. It was obviously something to worry about. Why weren't staff treating him? Now, the thing is, and as someone who knows this, oftentimes they'll treat symptoms, but they, they, you know, they don't necessarily treat the cause of the symptoms. Uh, and that is often a, a major problem. Uh, anyway, Pamela added, he was unrecognisable. His lips were like bananas, his eyes were like tennis balls, and his face was cut and had been eaten away 
by a MRSA infection. After James died, the family were told he suffered from a cardiac arrest, but his death certificate listed COVID as the cause, which surprised Pamela as he appeared to be suffering from a serious infection. Exactly, and this is the thing, they were putting COVID down regardless of what the cause of death was. So he obviously was having a massive uh, allergic reaction. He was obviously infected with something, some form of MRSA or MRSA. Uh, so there was, there was that, uh, which again, and he picked that up within the hospital, not COVID. He'd previously had allergic reactions to antibiotics and the family say he would not have consented to being given tocizilumab. The drug is known to suppress the immune system and lower resistance to infection and some people also develop allergies to it. So as soon as they see the reaction to being given this, they should have ceased it and they should have brought him down with other medications. They clearly didn't. Pamela said many of her family members caught COVID in autumn 2021 after her daughter picked up the virus at school. While for most the infection ran its course, it affected the dad of two James more severely. On September 17th, Pamela's son took his uncle to Ninewells Hospital and by 10pm that night, Pamela was told James was going to die. That's how quick it was because he went there with COVID and then they've given him this and then boof, and so very quickly, he's degenerated. This is quite clearly a reaction to what he was given. Pamela claimed, then we learned he was going on this drug trial, but his stats were so low, he would not have had the capacity to give permission. So they basically experimented on him. This is Mengele at its best. And we've said time and time again throughout COVID that they were doing things that were basically immoral and went against everything the Hippocratic Oath would say. And this was coming from on high, of course, and I'm not going to get into the politics of it, but this was undoubtedly from high that these things were happening. People are people. They're not guinea pigs. They're not experimental um, lab rats. But they were being treated like that. These doctors were more or less doing whatever they wanted, free from supervision, free from ethical boards, you know, I'd like to do this and they have to go to an ethics committee. That was all thrown out the window. He died on October the 5th, 2021. The consultant told her he had reported James's death to the procurator fiscal. But she had been told police are not going to investigate his death. So the consultant took this to the procurator fiscal because the consultant said there was something shady here. There was something wrong. This wasn't a normal death. And the police said they're not going to investigate. Or were they told not to investigate? Pamela said she complained about James's care to the NHS Tayside, but she said the replies I got never properly answered my questions and I have still to receive an explanation as to why the infections or cardiac arrest were not recorded on the death certificate because they're trying to cover their tracks. It is quite clear. She added, I thought my brother was in safe hands. Now, I'm living in fear of people who are supposed to help you. How many other people's deaths have just been written off as COVID? We've been saying this for a long time. COVID was used as a, as a get rid, cure all. Look, let's just go bang bang. We can possibly even. And I would, go, I would go so far as to say that there were people whose lives were ended deliberately and it was written off as COVID just because it was easier. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that that's happened. Uh, she said, this is my brother, but one day it could be yours. One day it could be anybody's. Um, we know how bad they are. One Scots pharmacist, who asked not to be named, said there was widespread, widespread concerns about the use of tocizilumab to treat COVID. She told the record, young people, particularly those in their 20s and 30s, who were shown otherwise in good health, developed cytokine release syndrome when they got covid uh, cytokines are small proteins and form an immune response to infection, amongst other things. But the pharmacist explained, some pe young people were releasing far too many cytokines, but this overreaction to COVID could leave the body really struggling. And in these patients, uh, patients, tocizilumab saved some patients. It could be a miracle, but only for one small group of people. She says, I'm not criticising the use of this drug during COVID because they were trying different things. Yes, but trying different things experimentally not with any oversight, not with a control group, not with an ethics committee standing over them. It was, the, it was the fascistic medical trials 
of the 30s. It basically was that. It was Mengele all over again. The pharmacist said the swelling symptoms described by James's sister would be a sign of an allergic reaction. Swelling of the lips, tongue or throat would indicate that. She added, I would have been hesitant to use that drug on a man with a known history of allergies because the patient would be at risk of losing his life. The NHS tele site said, while we cannot comment on matters relating to individual patients, yes you can, especially when that is now in the public domain and it is of po severe public interest, they're using that line to avoid being scrutinised and being held to account. They said uh, that our thoughts remain with Mr Cameron's family. Oh, I'm sure that they are really pleased that your thoughts remain with them. You are the ones, potentially, who ended his life, but at least you're thinking of him. You lie. You haven't given him a second thought. Uh, our clinicians have responded in great detail on two occasions to the concerns raised by the family. I bet they haven't. Uh, we've already invited the family to raise any outstanding concerns with us and offer, uh, and this offer remains. But they haven't explained why they put COVID down on the death certificate. The National Library of Medicine, run by the US government's health department, carried out a survey of COVID patients given tocilizumab. It found a serious risk of infections resulted in many cases. It stated out the 52 people uh, patients identified infectious complications after tocilizumab were documented in 30 patients. That's 60%. 60% of patients have this massive side effect that could cause them to lose their lives. That should be absolutely a red light. Like that should be say no, must be a last last chance, you know, the last chance saloon sort of thing. Uh, they also stated that while early use of tocilizumab may have been a benefit, more rigorous patient selection and monitoring should be explored, adding infectious complications are not uncommon in COVID patients who receive it. The drug has been used for some time to treat certain arthritic conditions. And it goes on to tell you about that. Don't care about that. This man lost his life because doctors were experimenting with test procedures without any kind of clinical oversight and were quite clearly the cause of his death through uh, infection, through allergic reaction, and then ultimately the stopping of his heart with a cardiac arrest. Nothing to do with COVID. Covid did not kill this man. The treatment killed him. I'm stopping and I'm coming up. There we go. I mean, it's quite clearly yet again, uh, and the NHS badly, badly getting it wrong. We've covered this. We've dealt with um, the Greater Glasgow and Clyde, and now we have Tayside, the other side of the country. It's not limited to one area. This is something that seems to be almost universal. This um, this terrible, terrible um, throwing out of all the rules, of all the controls during the COVID time and no one wanting to take responsibility, no one owning up. It seems to be cover up after cover up. Um, this is something that, um, you know, it's something that Leslie, uh, Leslie Roberts has alluded to uh, in our, you know, in our past interviews and that about basically everything being, you know, oh, basically secretized. Uh, you weren't allowed to access this and you weren't allowed to access that. You're having to go to freedom of information to get any kind of information out of them. And even then they're trying all their best to sort of deny even freedom of information requests. So it's it's not surprising that it isn't just limited to one area. It seems to be sort of universal. Um, and it's something I think maybe at the next um, the next meeting I have or the next, yeah, next, next time I speak to Leslie, I'll bring this up. Uh, and see you know what her reaction is to it but i think it's um it's such tragedy that they're using people as basically lab rats um uh, in you know and, and 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 covering it up not admitting the truth not telling the truth the truth always comes out but the truth is always damaging to these people the moment you embark on anything that is immoral or unethical you know the truth must be hidden or they they probably go to prison it's that bad Anyway, I shall stop there. Um, I will say that um, it's an absolute tragedy for the family. Uh, I hope they can get some comfort in times to come. And I hope that the truth does come to them and that they can um, basically find out who did what. We're not even... It, it could be it could be doctors under pressure. It could be anything. And that's fine. It's fine. But they need to know the truth. Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, do please... Uh, subscribe if you haven't. 35% uh, of you now subscribe, my regular viewers, so it'd be nice to get it up to 40. 
uh, and do please hit the like especially hit the like on this video because uh, with the, the way the algorithm works the more likes the wider it spreads uh, it spreads and the more the truth comes out so do please hit the like until next time stay safe stay well and remember the truth always comes out bye